All right, here we go for a floor design. Start by creating a sketch on the top view and make a rectangle from the center point, which becomes very handy later on. And our floor is going to be 260 by 260 millimeters. Hit enter, and then you have a nice rectangle. I can uh, extrude that little rectangle to get our floor going, and the distance that I want to extrude it is the width of our cardboard, four millimeters. New body is good. Boom, we have now an object in 3D, it's called body one, and that's your, your floor. Now I can sketch right on there to make the notches for your walls. Um, I just put it down roughly at first. Um, I'll make them 52 millimeters uh, long by four millimeters for the thickness of the cardboard and I hit enter. And then I use constraints a lot to put things in place. I want it to be five millimeters from the edge. Okay, and then I also want it to be 52 millimeters from the top. And here's a little trick. You can refer to another dimension. It's D6 and it will always be the same. Even if you change this one, the other one would respond. You can move your dimensions around so they look nice. And that is a good notch. So I can show you um, what we can do with that. We can actually extrude that um, backwards, minus four. And it becomes a cut. And we now have a notch ready for your cardboard. I'll show you another trick. Um, we can mirror that instead of making another one or many of them. I can actually use some of the tools. I can mirror the, instead of a body, I want to mirror just the feature of this hole. I might have to twist it a little bit to make sure I can select it. There we go. That's what I want. The mirror plane itself is going to be one of the world planes. Um, it's going to be this one right here. And you can see it's already showing a preview. And I think that's good to go. Now I have two. Now, if you wanted uh, more around it, you can use another tool. Uh, I'm going to use the circle pattern. Where's my patterns? Pattern, circular pattern. And in, again, instead of bodies, I want features. This time I want to select there and there. The axis itself is going to be the world uh, Z axis. And that's why we started there, in fact. And then uh, the default is three. You could do four if you want to have all your notches be the same on every side. Uh, I'm not going to do four because I want to have a patio and I encourage uh, you to make a patio. So there's another way to do it. You can do a symmetric uh, circular pattern. I think uh, only three of them. And there we go. I have Three of the sides good to go. The other one is going to be blank for now. And now I have six holes ready for cardboard walls. Okay, how do you make a wall? Let's do a wall. Uh, you want to sketch right on the side of the notches. So like right on this back side of the notch, that's the foundation of my wall. Um, I'll make a rectangle just loosely first, and then I can dimension as I go. Uh, certain things need to be exactly lined up. Uh, for example, the bottom. I'm going to use a collinear constraint so that it lines up with the bottom. Okay, I'm going to dimension from the center to the side. And in that case, it's going to be five millimeters less than the overall uh, because of that notch, the edge we have around our notch. Okay, one more dimension for the side to the center point, and I want it to match this one. So I can just click on it and hit enter, and then, then they're symmetrical. Lastly is the height uh, from the, you could do it either from the floor or the, uh, the zero. It's not selecting the top part, so I'll just do it from the, the floor. Um, so what we want is walls that are 60 tall plus four for the thickness of the floor. So 64 in total. And I can finish the sketch. And then I can extrude that by the width of our cardboard, which is four. 
and sometimes it doesn't notice uh, one of the notches for some reason, so you often have to select one of the notches for some reason. And I want this to be a new body. So there's my wall, and right now um, it's got a problem. There are two things trying to occupy the same space, and you definitely wouldn't be able to build it this way because the floor and the wall can't occupy the same space at the same time. So I'm going to remove part of my wall by using the floor as a tool. So select the wall first, and then the floor. And OK, make sure you keep the tool, though, otherwise you lose your floor. You can always go back into it. If you make a mistake, just go back into it. Make sure that this keep tools is selected, and then you'll keep your floor. And now I can turn the floor off. And I can see beautiful little notches that would fit perfectly when you laser cut it into the floor. Okay, a couple more things I want to do with my wall because I want them to interlock. You can sketch right on your wall, sketch right on the wall, perfect. I'm going to make little notches for the finger joints to fit. Once again, I'm going to put it down um, and just start to dimension it. It's going to be 12 high and tab four in width. But I want it this time to be right at the edge. So I'm using collinear again. I use it a lot in this design. And then I want it to be specifically 12 from the top. And again, I can select that other variable. I do this because it's one fifth. I like one fifth. It just, uh, it's gonna make two teeth on one side and three on the other. And I need one more. So here's my rectangle. Again, it's uh, 12, tab 4, enter. Uh, it's going to be collinear with the side wall, and it's going to be 12 away from the notch above it, 12. So everything is 12, 12, 12. Beautiful. Okay, finish that sketch and extrude two holes going backwards by negative four millimeters and a cut is good boom got some notches on the other side i'm going to do slightly different so that it'll match i sketch again on my wall and now i have a rectangle 12 by 4 enter this time collinear with the side and collinear with the top Another one, 12, tab four, enter, uh, collinear with the side, and then 12 millimeters away from the one above. Put it over here, it doesn't matter which side I put it on, and that's 12. Last one is here, uh, four, tab 12, good to go. This time collinear with the side and collinear with this one. Okay. Finish the sketch. Do an extrusion for the cut. One, two, three. Negative four for the depth. And it's a cut. Nice. We've got a beautiful wall. And now I want multiple walls. I'll, I'll not do four again. I'm going to do three. Uh, so we'll do, repeat the same pattern. It's a uh, circular pattern. This time I do want a body, not a feature. I want the object, the wall itself. Uh, the axis is once again the world Z axis. The symmetric 180 with a three is perfect. And now I have three walls all nicely fitting together with both the floor and the um, other walls. Okay, so in order to do the patio, it is more tricky. Uh, it might take a little time, but it's worth it because it looks really good. Um, I don't know if this one would show up, but uh, this is kind of where we're going with this. If I turn on everything, I've got windows, walls, and stuff like that. This is kind of where we're going with it, with the patio. Um, but where do those notches go and stuff like that? It takes a bit of thinking. Um, 
So I'll just kind of show you the rough idea on here first, and then I could show you my final dimensions. So you would just want to keep making a, a sketch on the floor and then make some notches. The sizes and stuff are kind of up to you, depending on what patio you want. I did uh, 26 by four, enter, and then dimension it away from the wall by five and away from the top. Uh, that's where I have to check. I think I did from here. Oh, let me check the other one. Um, I'd have to go into some sketches, which would take me some time to find. If I turn off the walls and the windows, kind of gives you an idea where I'm going with this. So here's my first notch, and then it goes around this one, and then I had a, a bigger one here, and a small one, and a small one. So they kind of have a nice pattern. These are all 26 long, 26 long here. This is 52 long, 26. 26 looks quite nice and then this last one is for uh, my patio uh, to hold the like a uh, railing kind of thing okay so I think I'll wrap it up for this one here um, I can show you in another one how to make doors and windows and the interior walls should also interlock you know, and then um, interlock with themselves and the floor. There's not just for your wall. So um, in the end, you might have a lot of holes in your floor, but that's okay. It should look really great in the end.